Kerry here again. This is a follow-up video on a video I did last week on Masterworks. It's it's an entry point into the fine art world. I, I, as I said in the prior video, investing in fine art has been basically reserved for the ultra-rich in the past. But through uh, Masterworks, I have been exposed to, and I'm excited about, how you also can get involved in uh in fine art. Let me explain what's what's here behind you. This is my second Picasso. In the earlier video, I, I shared with you my copy of The, the Dream. Not a, my copy, it is an original, but I paint these. I'm a creator. I learned that, that uh, I like to create things, and I love art, and I wanted Picassos. This was painted, I paint, painted this a number of years ago, and it is a very famous one of of Picasso's paintings. It's La Damselle's de Avagon. It's a picture of uh, some prostitutes in a brothel that uh, apparently uh, Pablo frequented. I've, I adapted it and, and put that little young lady out there holding her hand out and changed uh, one of the figures in here um, to represent someone I know. And, and I hung this over our bathtub in, in our loft in Atlanta. And I think you can see it, it kind of, it, it caught the eye if you, can, if you walked into the bathroom. So it's my Picasso, it's my love of art. And I've just recently become aware of Masterworks, which gives me an avenue to own exotic art, or not exotic, but fine art. And I got to know Masterworks, I've, I've, uh, I've learned a lot from their their founder, uh, Scott Lynn, who founded the company in 2017. I did the first video, so go back and watch that. And But this video, I want to explain a little bit further. I had a follow-up interview with David Huntington, and he was one of the original 10 employees, and he explained to me uh, in more detail how the whole process worked. And I want to go into that with you in this video. Now, this is not financial advice. This is ultimate. This is top of the line financial education because I don't think most of you knew you can invest in fine art and you need to know that fine art as a investment category has outperformed the S&P 500 consistently. But you got to know what you're buying and that's where Masterworks steps in and really helps you. And let's dig into that a little bit deeper as I after I get done with this disclosure. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. What do I mean when I say uh, they help you? They have a staff of about 120 people. And, and David tells me it's basically um, analysts and um, uh, authorities in art, researchers and, and curators. And what they're trying to do is to uh, analyze the investment category of fine art and is it an appreciation? Is it appreciating or depreciating? Then they dig deeper and deal with the individual artists. And that is to say, is this artist trending up or is it trending down? Um, Scott shared with us an example of Monet. And we, we look at this on an artist by artist basis. So if you take an artist like Monet, for example, Monet, I think last year sold something like $400 million in art in total. Um, his return is quite low compared to to other artists that we look at, but he has the most predictable return of of any artist we track. So his his standard deviation in return for those people that are that are finance geeks is roughly six or seven percent. Um, so it's 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 really it's really amazing how how some of these artists just exhibit really good store value characteristics and are very very predictable. Then you have um, more current artists, both living and deceased, whose, whose uh, value are increasing at different rates. So what, what David was sharing with me is what they wanted to do in the interview that I had with them is basically determine my risk tolerance. And that is to say, uh, do I want to buy a Monet that may increase at a rate of 6% per year, or I would I rather buy a Jackson Pollock that increase is 
historically at 15 or 30. And I'm just pulling numbers out of the air. So they want to understand my risk tolerance and where this fits into my overall portfolio. The other thing David says is, which is very important, is time frame. I'm 77 years old. Do I want to wait 10 years to cash it in? Well, maybe not. Or do I want it to be a part of my portfolio that I pass on to my heirs and pass on that love of art by having ownership in a piece of art that I bought ownership in? Um, And then they want to know how aggressive I want to be. And again, in that regard, David and all the research that they do guide me into what sort of painting that I want. Now, the other thing that David talked to me about about was the secondary market. And that is to say, let's say I own one ten thousandth of this painting. um, And that consists of uh, 50 shares at whatever price. Let's say four years down the road, I have a need for liquidity. And there are other people who also own parts of this painting. Well, on their website, I can go on and say, I'm willing to share, sell my shares of La Damsels at such and such a price. Well, you might look at it and say, hey, I already own some, but I'd like more. So that creates the ability to, uh, to liquidate and to get, put liquid, liquidity into your investment uh, through the secondary market that they basically control or oversee, I should say. Now, how does Masterworks make their money? They take ownership by taking share, additional shares. So if the painting started out with 100 shares, each year they would take 1.5 additional shares. So now it would be rather than 100 at the end of the year, it would be 100 and one and a half shares. And that's how they get paid for their insurance, for their management, and for the work that they do for you. Then when the the painting is ultimately sold, they take 20% of the profits. So in essence, they are a shareholder as you are and have a vested interest in the painting. And each painting is run as a separate entity, a separate company. And that's what I've learned about Masterworks. Again, the website is masterworks.io. Don't know what that stands for. And I would encourage you to surf it, take a look at it. And then if, in fact, this is something you want to explore further, just enter your name and the the contact information. And David or one of his compatriots will uh, give you a call and, and feed you the information that you need to make a good investment decision. This and, and I want to share this with you. I, I, I have a number of brokers. I, I broker with uh, uh, E-Trade and Charles Schwab, and they've never treated me like this. They've never actually wanted to help me make good investment decisions. But then I, I don't have uh, $500 million to invest. So maybe this is the normal way that hedge funds work with their clients. I don't know. Uh, But that's part of my financial education for you today, and that's Masterworks. Take a look at it, and then let me know. Come by by our our Discord, and let me know what you think of Masterworks and if you're looking for a Picasso. Talk to you again soon. (music) 